Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snailus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue on our amazing playlist called Pulmonology. In the previous video, we have talked about a crazy mnemonic about granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Today, we'll talk about Ludwig angina. It's not Ludwig or Ludwig, it's Ludwig. Because the scientist was, or the physician was German. His name was Wilhelm Friedrich von Ludwig. Okay, I'm an Egyptian guy, so I try my best. Ludwig angina caused by an infection of one of your teeth. And this will lead to spread of infection to the floor of the mouth. This can be life-threatening because it can obstruct the airway. With that being said, now let's get started. Let me help you first by answering the case of the previous video, case 10, which had six questions. 41-year-old homeless man comes into your office complaining of difficulty swallowing. The condition started four days ago when he noticed that swallowing has become painful. He feels mass in his mouth and neck. He admits smoking one pack a day of cigarettes 25 years and drinks alcohol every night. Vital signs are significant for fever and mild tachycardia. On general exam, the patient looks disheveled, smells bad, has rotten teeth, and cigarette smoking stigmata. On examination, the head and neck, you notice circumoral redness, not pallor, redness. Firm, tender, bilaterally symmetric induration on the submandibular space. There is also crepitus on the lower mandible and the patient is drooling. 1. What is the most likely diagnosis? Now please pause. And the answer is, first, this guy is homeless. This is really important. He has dysphagia and odinophagia. He is disheveled, smells bad, rotten teeth. He is a smoker and an alcoholic. Physical exam, you have circumoral redness, firm, tender, bilaterally symmetric in duration of the submandibular space, and crepitus, and the patient is drooling. So the diagnosis here is obviously Ludwig angina, which is A. Why? First, the guy is homeless and all of this. This leads to tooth infection. Tooth infection is what triggers this Ludwig angina. Since there is crepitus, the organism is probably an, an anaerobe. Drooling, why? Because of the submandibular space mass. The patient cannot swallow, so he drools. Circumoral redness happens in Ludwig angina. This is different from circumoral pallor, which happens in scarlet fever. Next, which of the following are triggers that started the condition? Now pause. And this is so easy. The answer is B, smoking, poor hygiene, and tooth infection. I don't know if he has HIV or not. Congenital defect of the heart palate. This is torus palatinus. This guy is not a kid. He's an old guy. Coxsackie virus leads to herpangina and not Ludwig angina. Weak immunity leading to TB reactivation. It's not a typical case. Bacterial inflammation of the larynx. No, it's the submandible. Spread of infection from rhinosinusitis. Probably not. Spread of infection from orbital. No, cavernous sinus syndrome. Usually we start in here and goes to the cavernous sinus. We don't start with the cavernous sinus and end up with Ludwig. Foreign body aspiration, no clue. A fungal infection, I don't think so. Type 2 diabetes will lead to mucor and rhizobus, but not this Ludwig angina. What's the most likely causative organism? Please pause. And the answer here is C, streptococcal species or anaerobe. Anaerobe, why? Because you sow crepitus. And because this guy is a homeless, his teeth smells bad, he had tooth infection, he had bad smell, etc., 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 and poor hygiene. Cryptococcal species, this is cryptococcal like meningitis if the patient has HIV. Pneumocystis gerovici, this is PCP pneumonia if the patient had HIV. Coxsackie virus will lead to herp angina. Serratia species, when you have um, like a very rare disorder of your like neutrophils or lymphocytes, something like that or if you have very weak immunity. Because serratia is an unusual organism. How do you treat serratia? And the answer is Astreonam, which is a monobactam that covers gram-negatives, including Pseudomonas and serratia 
and others. Klebsiella pneumonia, this is an elderly patient who is in like uh, in care, like a senior home or something, he's an alcoholic, stuff like that. And the question will describe a very thick mucoid sputum. Klebsiella pneumonia can cavitate in the upper lobe of the lung, which can confuse you with tuberculosis. What else can cavitate in the upper lobe? There is a cancer called squamous cell carcinoma, which can lead to something called pancost tumor. Also, histoplasmosis is notorious for cavitating the upper lobe. So we have four diseases, like for example, that can cavitate in the upper lobe of the lung. One, tuberculosis, especially secondary TB, because primary TB is here. Next, we have Klebsiella. Third, we have histoplasmosis. And four, we have squamous cell lung cancer. Next, mucorin rhizobus, if the patient was diabetic, and I don't know if he is diabetic. Next, what is the underlying pathology? Please pause. And the answer is Ludwig angina is a cellulitis caused by streptococcal or anaerobes. Abscess, furuncle, and carbuncle is staph aureus. Sepsis, cellulitis, necrotizing, fasciitis is streptococcal. Do you know why? Because staph has an enzyme called coagulase. It coagulates the staph in a narrow area and confines the staph into a limited location. So you end up with a narrow, limited, tiny thing like an abscess, a furuncle, or at the very least, carbuncle. Streptococci do not have coagulase. They can spread all over the place. Cellulitis, sepsis, necrotizing fasciitis. But unfortunately, your crazy microbiology professor did not tell you that. Next, what's the most common cause of death in this condition? Please pause. And the answer is asphyxiation. This Ludwig angina can block the upper airway, leading to asphyxiation. Next, what's the next best step in management? Please pause. And the answer is D, incision and drainage, because this is a cellulitis, antibiotic, because this is a bacterial infection, tracheostomy if needed to save the airway to prevent asphyxiation. Ludwig angina, what's the story? You have poor hygiene and bad tooth infection. Please be specific. Second and third molar. So second or third molar. Were mandibular or maxillary mandibular. In other words, the lower jaw. That's why it's an infection or a cellulitis in the floor of the mouth. It's the lower jaw, guy, lower jaw. okay? It's not the upper one. Okay, we got it. Leading to a bilateral fluctuant mass or an abscess of the floor of the mouth. Actually, it's a bacterial cellulitis. Cause streptococci or anaerobes. It can lead to spread to submandibular and sublingual spaces, one of the spaces of the head and neck. They call them potential spaces or spaces that lead to infection. Cardinal signs of inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, big time, pain, loss of function, and pus. Swelling of the submandibular spaces leading to a posterior displacement of the tongue. The tongue is shifted backwards, and this can block your upper airways, because angina means pain, pressure, or strangulation. And in this case, it means strangulation, because it can block your airways, and it can be an emergency. Risk factors for Ludwig angina. You have alcohol, smoking, poor hygiene, and tooth infection. Alcohol and smoking together may increase your risk, and alcohol and smoking together also increase your risk of what? Of squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. So nasopharyngeal, it could be like pharyngeal, laryngeal, anywhere in the head and neck, any squamous carcinoma there risk factors, smoking is number one, alcohol is number two. In case of Ludwig angina, it's poor hygiene and tooth infection as well. Which tooth? Second or third mandibular molar. What is Ludwig angina? It's an abscess. It's a freaking bacterial cellulitis. Which bacteria? Strept or anaerobes. Clinical signs and symptoms of Ludwig angina. First symptoms, fever, it's an infection. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Hotness is here. Pallor, dysphagia, of course, it displaces the tongue. Odinophagia, pain on swallowing. Absolutely. Drooling, yep, because the saliva doesn't have anywhere to go because of this obstruction. Signs, 
Circum oral redness, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. This is different from scarlet fever. In scarlet fever, all of your face is red with circum oral pallor. So let's draw scarlet fever like this. So here's fever, 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 and there is redness, and there is your mouth, here's your nose, there is circum oral pallor. So redness everywhere except the circum oral area. This is different from Ludwig angina because Ludwig angina have circum oral redness. Okay, what else? In Ludwig angina, firm, tender, bilaterally symmetrical in duration of the submandibular space because of the spread of infection. From where? From the tooth infection. Please be specific. Second or third moral, m molar. Which molar? Mandibular or maxillary? The answer, mandibular. Can even lead to gas formation or crepitus. When you press on the patient's skin, it's gonna feel like tuck, 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 as if there's air bubbles bursting underneath your fingers. How to diagnose Ludwig angina? Clinical diagnosis, CBC will show leukocytosis, especially neutrophilia because it's an acute infection, gram student culture for the strips and anaerobes. Most common cause of death, asphyxiation. That's why we call it Ludwig angina, because angina means pain, pressure, or strangulation. Management, incision and drainage because of the freaking abscess, antibiotics because it's a freaking abscess, and if it risks obliterating and occluding the airway, intubation or tracheostomy. Because remember, if it's an emergency, ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. Airways first, you secure the airway, honey, secure the airway. Now let me give you some pearls for the pros. If it affects the upper jaw or the maxilla, it's not Ludwig. If it affects the parotid gland, it's not Ludwig. If it did spread to the mediastinum, it's not Ludwig. Do you know what spreads to the mediastinum? You guessed it, the retropharyngeal abscess. The way I remember it, retro is risky. Why risky? It causes acute necrotizing mediastinitis. If you find any of these three, you have excluded Ludwig angina. Also, you need to use your common sense. Like, you don't just like, oh, is this, therefore it's not Lu No, you use the constellation of symptoms. You use signs, symptoms, history, physical, all of this. Because medicine is all about pattern recognition. You don't just, oh, this test is positive, therefore. No, not therefore. You have to find lots of stuff. The picture has to fit the puzzle. Let's face it, you're struggling to learn Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Strep, Staph, E. coli, etc. Please check out my friend's website, it's called Picmonix. See the link in the description below. This website is amazing. Also, as a gift for my viewers, there are links in the description below. These are Amazon books. If you can subscribe, they will give you a free book. You can choose a medical textbook and it's yours for free for a month. So enjoy the deal while it lasts. How to differentiate between Ludwig angina, torus palatinus, and herpangina? Here is the answer. If it's hard mass on the hard palate in a baby, it's torus palatinus. If it's a fluctuant mass in floor of the mouth in a tooth-infected guy with poor hygiene, smoker, alcoholic, etc., it's Ludwig angina. Causes bacterial, be specific, streptor anaerobes. If, on the other hand, there are vesicles on the tonsillar pillars, the tonsils, in a child with fever and sore throat, this is herpangina. It's viral. The virus name is Coxsackie A. Remember, this is called hand, foot, mouth. Mouth disease. Makes sense. Let's have a new case. This is case 11 and it has two questions. So where are the previous 10 cases? In my playlist called Pulmonology and you can find it in my great channel. Let's start. 29-year-old male comes into your office complaining of pain in the neck. The pain started two and a half days ago and that happened 36 hours after a political fundraising marathon. At that event, he ran for one hour with a metal spoon in his mouth to declare his support for his free speech rights. While running, he fell on the ground and the spoon hit the back of his mouth. He noticed some fever and drooling. He says, Doctor, I cannot move my neck easily and I cannot extend my neck to the fullest. Vital signs show fever plus tachycardia and high blood pressure. On physical exam, the young man could not open his mouth fully for you to examine the mouth because of the pain. Active range of motion of the neck is reduced during neck extension. 
First question, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Malingering, factitious disorder, Menchhausen syndrome, somatization disorder, herpangina, Ludwig angina, torus palatinus, submandibular abscess, parapharyngeal abscess, retropharyngeal abscess, rhinosinusitis, vocal cord paralysis or laryngotracheobronchitis, also known as croup. The next question. What is a fatal complication of this condition? More than one answer is possible, just choose the most correct one. DIC, ARDS, acute necrotizing mediastinitis, involvement of the carotid sheath causing jugular thrombophlebitis, hemorrhagic shock, shock, respiratory muscle paralysis, or bronchogenic carcinoma. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can support this channel. Please support this channel on Patreon. I'll give you my notes, my cases, and my PDF illustrations, and my audio notes. They are available for download. You download the link from the Dropbox, and they are yours forever, baby. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time.